And welcome back to the Factor on Sense. Those buy now, pay later apps can come in clutch if you need a little money or time to pay for something. But as we've reported, they can also be very dangerous as hell, especially if you're bad with your damn money to begin with. While seemingly convenient, are these apps hiding now broke people who are really broke as hell? I mean, giving you a false sense of the economy by allowing them to spend money they don't have. We called in our next guest for this conversation, Dr. Dietrich von Bietenfeld from the University of Houston downtown, along with our Gen Zers, the young folk are here. We have with us Annalisa Mena, Chaz, who's like Madonna, she gets one name, and Reina Mejia. Glad to have you all here on The Factor on Censor. So Chaz, do you, have you ever used any of these pay as you go, or do you know people who use these pay as you go and they should in the hell not be using it? Um, well, I'm guilty. Um, <laughs> it's me. I've it's a used, new layaway. Yeah, I've used Afterpay. Um, I think I had bought my aunt some like nice Steve Madden boots, um, but I didn't have all the money at the time, so I used Afterpay. But the thing that they get you with is you don't know that, okay, my bills are coming up, but I also have to pay this bill of my Afterpay off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you find yourself in a hole and how did you dig yourself out of it? Uh, basically just saving. I would suggest for people to just save. Like if you really, really want to truly buy something, you need to save your money for it instead Anna of doing Afterpay. Annalisa, your thoughts on this? I actually didn't know much about Afterpay until today. Mm -hmm. So I usually don't buy anything if I don't have the money for it. But I do use my credit card to build that credit if I can. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, if I know I don't have it, I won't, I won't buy it. And have you had friends who may have used this? Obviously, you're not. <laughs> you're yes, not yeah, this one right I here. I have to tell her all about Afterpay. <laughs> I, I about love Afterpay. It. I love Klarna. So is Afterpay kind of like Klarna, a firm? Yeah, and all it's, of all, those? it's all the same idea. It's if, if you um, have a large payment, you can pay it in like four installments over mm -hmm. the course of like two months. And you pay, let's say, you have a $100 payment, you pay $25 the time of, and then $25 in two weeks, and then so on, until it's all paid off. I love it. I, I, don't, I use it, um, but I know I have to be careful. I use it only when I have like a big purchase, like if I want to buy concert tickets. I recently bought like $400, $500 concert tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Concert tickets? <laughs> yes! <laughs> you know, and, but, and I paid it off. Oh, and Dr. Von Bietenfeld, I, I actually read uh, on a Twitter feed where someone said, I bought a gift card with a firm, a client, I can't recall which, only to buy groceries. So it's oh, wow. kind of like, wow, w w what is going on? So are we putting ourselves in a financial hole and giving us a self, ourselves a sense of security when there really is none right now in the economy? Well, I don't know if I want to give an expert opinion when I got these young people, because we know the young <laughs> people know everything. Only a PhD. <laughs> right. So the, the, one of the things we realize is this, this really ties into the law and supply cycle aspects of my expertise, which is there are secured debt and unsecured debt, so things you can file bankruptcy on, things you can't, right? Mm -hmm. Student loans are one of those challenging things we're still arguing about as far as uh, things that you can't necessarily forgive easily. Well, a lot of these forms of debt, you can't just go to the bank and say, hey, let's come up with a payment plan. They can call that margin right then. And so we, it's, it's like the 2008 financial crisis all over again with the housing bubble because people say, well, I'm going to make more money or my house is going to appreciate in value. And as soon as it depreciates in value and your mortgage payment is more than the value of the house, you suddenly have defaults. Mm -hmm. So it's a very tricky situation and a lot of people don't realize another parallel, of course, is this new discussion about nursing homes and assisted living with Medicare and people say, how does that relate? Because people can be kicked out of assisted living and they can't be kicked out of nursing homes legally. So the same way with debt, you may go get some low interest uh, payment plan with a credit card or then get some sort of 10% discount with a um, gift card. And you say, oh, I saved 10% and I can pay it out over the next five months and then you get a flat tire. Or then you suddenly have uh, a leaky water faucet and you've got to pay $200, $500 to the plumber. Guess what? Now your debt has increased beyond what your capacity was planned on. So it, it's a very tricky cycle and these sorts of things are especially dangerous because the protections are more limited than they would be with secure debt. All right, we want to thank, and of course, Apple just started their own uh, pay-as-you-go. 
you know, their own program as well. So you know there's money in it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us.